Well, good afternoon, everybody. So I've got something exciting to share. The monitoring for the Midnight One inverter just got a little bit better. So let's take a look. So I'm a data guy. I like to see the information. I like to see exactly what's going on right now. And if I want to see at any point in time what kind of power draw something is pulling on my system, I want to be able to look at whatever monitoring tool I'm using and see that real time. The app for the Midnight Inverter, if you're on a Bluetooth connection, will give you anywhere from what, eight to 15 seconds refresh rate, which might work for many people, but it's just not fast enough for me. I, I wanna see what's going on. I wanna be able to flip a switch and then look at my monitoring device and see it change right then and there. So I'm happy to share with you guys that Solar Assistant has added an integration for the midnight inverters so that we can see in near real time what's going on. So I have right here my Raspberry Pi running Solar Assistant. And Solar Assistant does have to run on a Raspberry Pi. And I'll leave links to a playlist if you're not familiar with what Solar Assistant actually does, what it looks like. We'll go through some of it here in just a minute. but. That way you can get a better idea of a full overview of Solar Assistant. So right now I've got my cables temporarily run just down into my wiring trough. And then it comes up to an RJ45 jack, which is then wired into that RS485 terminal right there. So you can see I've got two wires, a yellow, excuse me, a white and a green. White going into terminal number one and green going into terminal number two. I have it wired this way because I'm constantly making changes with all these connection cables. I wanted an easy way to be able to plug and unplug. You obviously could just take your USB to RS-485 and wire it directly into that terminal in the back. But this was just easier for me. So I've got this one wired in. And if we come over to the secondary inverter, you can see I have the second one wired in exactly the same. And these cables I just picked up directly from Solar Assistant. There are USB adapters out there on Amazon that you can use and take your own cable wire into the back of the adapter and then go directly into these inverters. And those will work just as well. I've, I've talked to several people that actually have those on their midnight inverters and they have no issues. So the wiring is extremely simple. If you get the RS-485 USB converter directly from Solar Assistant, you're going to need a way to terminate an RJ-45 plug. Actually, you really don't have to. You, like I said a minute ago, you could just wire it right into the terminal blocks. So it's up to you how you want to wire it into the inverter. <laughs> so just jumping into Solar Assistant on my mobile phone, I'm going to go straight to the configuration area and show you how you connect it first, and then we'll kind of walk through what options you have available to you with this connection to your midnight inverters. So on the settings tab, if you scroll all the way down to the inverters, I'm going to hit disconnect right now just so I can show you. But the model for these inverters is you're going to be tempted to click Midnight Solar. And I, and I was too. The Midnight Solar one right now is for the Rosie inverters. So if you have a Midnight Rosie, you can use that option to connect Solar Assistant and get the data from the Rosie into Solar Assistant. But for the Midnight One inverters, you want to click the Synergy option. And then depending on how many inverters you have stacked together, that's how many USB to RS-485s you need. 
So for me, I've got two of them. So I plugged them all in. You saw I already had them hooked up. On the mobile device, you're gonna tap both of them. If you're on a desktop, you might have to hold the shift key and then click multiples in order to select multiple devices. Once you get those selected, you're gonna see model is Synergy, connections, I have two items. And at this point in time, I'm just gonna use the battery values that the inverter has. If you have a Victron Smart Shunt, you can always select that but that's gonna be another USB device on your Raspberry Pi. I'm just gonna use the inverter values and hit save. You can hit advanced and program in. Um, these are gonna be the, the graphs and the speed gauges, I guess you could call them, that you see on the dashboard, what your max values are gonna be. So you can do your max grid power, PV, battery power. I actually haven't messed with these. The grid provider is, is for something else completely unrelated to the US. So I left them kind of as, as defaults or I probably have actually changed them with all the other systems that I end up messing with. But back to the inverter section, you can see we've got everything selected that we want. So I'm gonna hit connect and you're gonna see the status goes through. It says one inverter found, two inverters found, and then it says connected. If you hit the settings page, right now all it's gonna do is show you some basic information about each inverter, your serial numbers, your maximum MPPTs that you have, grid phases. There's really no configuration options available as of yet, but this, integration was just released what a few days ago so like a lot of things with solar assistant they're only going to end up adding more and more but they wanted to get that integration configured and released for at least the data logging aspect so now that we have solar assistant on our midnight inverters we can come to this main page we can see that I'm in an off-grid mode. Today I did 10 and a half kilowatts from one MPPT coming into one inverter, which is you know really good because I'm starting to see that number creep higher and higher and higher each day. Oh, I love springtime just for that reason alone. Grid, I don't have any grid connected. You're gonna see these little transient values if you're not using a grid connection. Uh, I've asked, I've actually seen them on multiple different inverters that I have tested over the years, and most places say, don't worry about it. So I don't, I just kind of expect to see it. It'd be nice to see zero, but yeah, I know there's nothing there. Battery at 61%, these are those gauges that I was talking about that you can program your max values. And then we can see our overview, our battery power, and our state of charge. And if you watch this battery graph, you watch it start to change every second or two. And you can see the load is going to just start bouncing based on what's running in the house. It's went from 400 up to 600. So very snappy. And that's what I love to see. I can tap into inverter and see a little more details about each inverter, inverter one and inverter two. We can see our loads in here, our voltages. We can see our inputs for our PV and then our battery, current, voltage, power, temperature, and if I had grid connected. Now, one thing with um, solar assistant and having multiple inverters connected, there's, Unfortunately, there's no easy way to say that I want this one to be the first one and I want this one to be the second one. So usually what I end up having to do if, is I have to disconnect in the configuration, plug the first one in first so that it registers as USB one and then plug the second one in and then cross your fingers and hope that this one, when you hit connect, it shows up in the order one, two. 
I know that I've asked the question of Solar Assistant in the past, and it's on their list to give you a the ability to select which one is in what order, but for the time being, you either have to you know, spin the wheel and hope it gets into the right order, or just remember the serial, the last few digits of the serial number of inverter one and inverter two. I mean, it's the same problem with the 6,000 XPs. If you have multiples stacked, it was the same problem when I had my EG4 6500s. So it is what it is right now. But lots of information on your inverter. You can click into the uh, battery section, see your capacity. I do know right now, at least the last time that I looked at this, the capacity is not correct. So if you set your, your midnight inverters to use lithium, no BMS, there is an option to enter in what the capacity of the battery bank you're using is. And right now, the Synergy integration seems to be pulling from that value instead of pulling the actual value that the BMS is sending. Does, does that make sense? So it, it, right now, I actually went into the inverter and punched in that 314. That's why it's showing 314, because in the past it was defaulting to 100 amp hours. That was free. But just, just be aware that if the capacity doesn't match the battery bank that you're plugged into, that's why. I have reported that to Solar Assistant, so hopefully that gets fixed in you know, a future update. But down here we can see our power, state of charge, voltage, and, and the temperature of the battery. We can get more nitty gritty on the details. So on the charts tab, there's, there's what, almost a dozen different charts that'll show you your overview of your grid, load, and solar. You see your battery power, state of charge boy that was, i love seeing this for the state of charge because you know i was at 30 percent this morning and now i'm at 62 just from all the pv coming in today uh, we can see our mppt voltage and current i need to get some other pv connected to these inverters uh, you can see the mppt power and then there are different color shades if i had pv connected to this inverter you see down here on the bottom, inverter one and inverter two. Uh, I just have stuff on the one right now. It's something that I, I didn't know for the longest time. I just kind of assumed that that's how it was. But you can actually come in and tap these colors and change it. So inverter one is like a certain shade of yellow and then inverter two is just a different shade of yellow. Well, you could actually come in and just say, all right, I want inverter two to be orange. And you can make it stand out more. I didn't know for the longest time it did that. We've got our MPPT, power, MPPT up to MPPT three for each inverter. And then this chart here is gonna show you a combined total of all the PV for your inverter. We see our battery voltage, current, temperature, and then here's that, that transient grid voltage thing that I was talking about earlier. Output voltage and then your load from each inverter. We can see a summary of the, the system production and consumption over the last 30 days. You can see I've been on grid an awful lot just because we're coming out of that winter season. And so I'm finally starting to be able to run more on battery power and, and solar than having to run on the stupid grid power. And then it'll, you'll, you'll see here, you know, more detailed breakdown on your last 30 days. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, it'll also give you a 52 week breakdown and a 12 month breakdown for consumption, for production, and just give you a nice picture of your entire system. This little lightning bolt symbol, this is where you would go to be able to make changes to your inverter. Like I said a few minutes ago, at this time, the Synergy integration doesn't have that ability. I know that Solar Assistant has the necessary information to be able to add different commands. 
to be able to program the inverters. I'm just assuming that they wanted to get the ability to read the inverters out first, and then they will slowly start to add in the ability to send commands to the inverter uh, going forward in future updates. But I'm excited to have Solar Assistant. I've been using their beta for, oh, I don't know, since I found out that it was a beta, <laughs> probably the last couple of months. And so it's it's been nice being able to see a lot of that more real-time data and tracking that, that I'm used to seeing because I've, I've used multiple inverters over the years with Solar Assistant, so I'm very familiar with it. I know that Midnight is continually making changes to their app to try and increase the speed and the read time and the monitoring time. Um, but for the time being, while they're making those changes, I can utilize Solar Assistant to be able to see stuff real time. Plus, and I know a lot of people don't even talk about this a lot, but Solar Assistant, in, in today's day and age where people are rightfully so concerned about sending data to the cloud, Solar Assistant kind of fills a little gap to where you don't have to send the data up to the cloud. All your inverter data can sit and stay locally on your Raspberry Pi. You don't even have to have the Raspberry Pi connected to the internet if you don't want it, but you can still access it locally and be able to see all that information. So I always forget to bring that up, but you know, with, with you know, seeing news articles about this getting hacked and that data being leaked and you know, you get all this spam garbage all the time, it's nice to see that you know, you can have good quality, real-time information stored locally for your inverters. So hopefully that helps. I did want to share this with everybody so that you can get your midnight inverters hooked into Solar Assistant to start seeing that real-time data. So with that, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.